Hey guys, uh, Mr. Piercy here, and what we're going to be looking at today uh, are going to be uh, sp we're we're getting into special segments of triangles and uh, some of the characteristics about them. So what we're going to look at today are perpendicular bisectors of triangles. Now, a perpendicular bisector is a relatively easy construction to make, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you some of these characteristics with a construction. So using my compass and my straight edge, I'm going to locate the midpoint of this acute triangle that I've made. I've called it XYZ. And I'm going to just find the midpoints of the three sides real quick. So that way we can do our, we can actually draw in our perpendicular bisector. And that one didn't get quite long enough, so let me make it a little bit longer. There we go. And one more. And you can see with an acute triangle, when you do all of the constructions kind of at the same time, it can get a little bit messy in the middle. If you do your marks on opposite sides the way I'm doing it, you could always do your marks both outside of the triangle by opening up your uh, compass further and repeating the same points. But let me go ahead and draw in my perpendicular bisectors. So here is one, and I'll call this um, point L just because. And so let me go ahead and get this one here. And I'll call that point M. And one more bisector. Right here. And I'll call that point N. Now, what we have uh, constructed are the three perpendicular bisectors of this particular triangle XYZ. Now, one of the things that you notice about the perpendicular bisectors is that they all intersect at the same point. This point right here, I'm going to call point C. And the reason I'm calling it point C is because that is known as a point of concurrency. Now, I'm not calling it C for concurrency. I'm calling it C because this is called the circumcenter. Now, a circumcenter is going to be the center of a circle that is circumscribed around the polygon, in this case, a triangle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, using the point C, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my compass here from C to X, here from C to Y, and here from C to Z, and we can see that they're all the same length. Because they're all the same length, it means that it must be the center of a circle that can go around the triangle. So that is uh, one of the main characteristics that we're going to be looking at for perpendicular bisectors, is that they do uh, create a point of concurrency, which in this case is known as a circumcenter. And in case I haven't explained it already, a point of concurrency is a point where three or more lines intersect at the same place. So this is what it would look like for an acute triangle. And of course, we can recognize that uh, the segments here and here, these are the same length. Now, one of the other th uh, nice things about a, a point of concurrency, I'm sorry, not a point of concurrency, but about a, a segment, a perpendicular bisector. I'm going to just pick this point here. And I'm going to call this point A. And one of the things that I want you guys to recognize is that if I go from point Z to point A, I'm just measuring it with my compass here. If I switch positions from point Y to A, we're going to see that it's going to be the same distance. So what this is illustrating is that anything 
along, anything that's along the perpendicular bisector will be the same distance away from the endpoints of the segment. And it doesn't have to be that way for a triangle, it's just that way for any time we have a perpendicular bisector. So here I would be able to say that because segment LC is a perpendicular bisector and point A is on the perpendicular bisector, then that means YA has to be congruent to ZA. So that's what it does. Those are the main characteristics of a perpendicular bisector. So I have here a couple of other examples, not that one. Here is a perpendicular bisector, the way it would look for a right triangle. You can see from what I did from the acute angle, or the acute triangle, you see that the point of concurrency is inside of the triangle. Now going to a right triangle, you can see it's much closer to the edge of the uh, hypotenuse in this case. So the, here's the uh, circumscribed triangle that we would see here and it, all the characteristics that we would see. Uh, same thing, I could pick a point here, call that point A, and just to verify, we can measure from Z to A and then go from point Y and we see, oh hey, it's the same distance. Now as we get bigger, as we make the triangles bigger, now we have an acute, I'm sorry, an obtuse triangle. And I should have made this one when I made it, I should have made it a little bit more to the left of the paper because you can see my triangle got pretty big and I didn't quite fit it on the paper. But here, the perpendicular bisectors of the obtuse triangle, while I kept the stuff inside of the triangle solid to represent the perpendicular bisector itself, uh, I extended the perpendicular bisectors outside of the triangle with the dotted lines to show that in this case, for an obtuse triangle, uh, the point of concurrency is not inside of the triangle anymore. And we can kind of see the progression as we go from the acute triangle, where its point of concurrency is located, to the right triangle, how it's getting closer to the bigger side of the triangle. And then now for an obtuse triangle, it's outside. And of course, it's because this is an obtuse triangle, in this case, the point of concurrency winds up being outside of the biggest side. So that is pretty much it as far as uh, perpendicular bisectors are concerned. It, the main things that I want you to make sure you remember, perpendicular bisectors, uh, have a point of concurrency in triangles known as the circumcenter. A perpendicular bisector will uh, have any point along the bisector will be congruent to the endpoints of the segment. And because the point of concurrency is the center of a circumscribed circle, the distance from the point of concurrency to each endpoint has to be the same. So in this case, we could say, uh, CX is congruent to CY is congruent to CZ. But anyway, that's it uh, for this lesson, a uh, brief lesson on perpendicular bisectors. If you have any questions, make sure you uh, let me know in the comment section uh, of the video or of the Google Classroom or send me an email and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, but